Good morning and welcome to the United in Christ Lutheran Parish. We begin our service this morning with the confession and forgiveness of sin. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, 
for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday after Epiphany is recorded in the Gospel of John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How would you finish this question? Can anything good come out of Back in the day when I was in high school, I attended Shorewood High School, one of three high schools in the Shoreline School District on the northern end of the Seattle city limits. Whether we were standing on the football field or sitting in the bleachers, we would have said, can anything good come out of Shorecrest High School? Can anything good come out of Shoreline High School? Or if you enjoy watching sports across the street at our fertile Beltrami High School, whether you're standing on the sidelines at the football field or sitting in the bleachers watching basketball or volleyball, you might finish that question can anything good come out of whatever community's high school is playing our student athletes? Now, I've been a Minnesota Vikings fan for over 50 years. If I consider my loyalty to the Minnesota Vikings, I might answer that question, can anything good come out of Green Bay, or Chicago, or Detroit, or basically whatever team the Vikings are taking on. How would you finish that question? Can anything good come out of In our gospel this morning from the first chapter of John, the chapter begins with John the Baptist baptizing people in the Jordan River. And then John tells us that Jesus met Philip. And Jesus invited Philip to follow him. And Philip responds and follows Jesus. And right away, Philip goes and finds his friend, Nathaniel. And Philip can barely contain his enthusiasm. 
after meeting Jesus for the first time. He says to Nathanael, We have found the one spoken of in the law and the prophets. He's Joseph's son from Nazareth. Now, I don't know what kind of reputation Nazareth had, but when Philip says that to Nathaniel, Nathaniel's response is one of skepticism. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And what's Philip's response? Come and see. So I don't know how good your memory is, but I'd like you to remember six words today. Come and see. That's easy enough, isn't it? Go and tell. Six words. Come and see. Go and tell. Over and over in John's Gospel, the disciples are invited to come and see. See what Jesus is about. Hear his teaching. Witness the miracles he performs. And then as an outgrowth of following Jesus, they are invited to go and tell. To go and be witnesses for Jesus. Now witnessing for Jesus, for the disciples, it it wasn't a burden. It was an opportunity. Come and see, go and tell. We've met Jesus. Philip says to Nathaniel, I've met Jesus. Come and see. Come and see Jesus for yourself. Come and see Go and tell. But me? A witness? Sharing my faith? Isn't that the pastor's job? No. That's part of our job description for all of us who follow Jesus Christ as Lord. Come and see, go and tell. Now, I know sharing your faith with others can be kind of intimidating. Me? A witness? I'm Lutheran. We're shy Lutherans, you know. And you've heard me share that statistic before that Lutherans invite someone to worship about once every 27 and a half years. What are those six words? Come and see, go and tell. You and I are witnesses for Jesus. After meeting Jesus and being claimed and named by him as children of God through the waters of holy baptism, we have a story to share about the love, grace, and forgiveness that we have received from our Savior Jesus. And maybe you aren't the most articulate or you don't think you are when it comes to sharing your faith or sharing the love of Jesus with someone else. But through the power of the Holy Spirit working and living in each one of us, Jesus can take our simple words and our actions and make a difference in the lives 
of others. You and I can make a difference in the life of someone else. Come and see, go and tell. A pastor was sitting in his office one morning when he heard a knock at the door. When he opened the door, there was a young man who was probably 25 years old. He had just finished delivering a pizza. And he wondered if he could have a conversation with that pastor. He told the pastor he had lived in that city his entire life. He spent some time going through Sunday school as a child, but it had been a long time since he had been in church. He finally told the pastor, Pastor, can you tell me why I should believe in this Jesus stuff anyway? The pastor went on to tell him how God had created the world good. It says that back in the book of Genesis. And God saw that it was good. But when sin entered the world, things got messed up. But Jesus came to make things right again. So how would you answer that young man? Why should I believe in this Jesus stuff anyway? Because in Jesus, I see that God is love. That Jesus was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, through water and the word of holy baptism, you and I have been given a new start, a new beginning. As I've said before, in holy baptism, we are claimed and named as God's children. So, do you know anyone today that needs to hear about Jesus' love? And not Jesus' love in general, but Jesus' love for them. Come and see, go and tell. That's our mission as God's people. Just as Jesus called Philip and Nathaniel, you and I are called to follow Jesus Christ, to be his disciples, his followers, in whatever congregation or community in which we live. You and I are called to share the good news of Jesus. Because the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation you and I have experienced through our Savior Jesus, that's a word of grace and love that so many need to hear in our world today. Come and see. Go and tell. Amen. We join in singing the song, Here I Am, Lord.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ, gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we may serve as wise stewards of the earth, our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, for the leaders of governments, and we especially remember this week our government, our country. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would give us wisdom, give us healing, and through your influence, heal all divisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those lacking food and shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, for those who are imprisoned or homebound. We especially remember this morning the family and friends of Laura Van Arum, Nancy Sand, Jeff Dale, Maxine Langved, Ray Larson, Maxine Williams, Don Agnes, Ino Krogstad, Brady Christensen, and Chad Olson. Lord, we ask that you would reach out your healing hand upon Kathy Swanson, Gail and Sterling Hollowell, Molly Van Arum, Marlon Sandus, Mark Christensen, Babs Oisted, Gwen Sorensen, Myrna Moore, Ellsworth and Alta Solarud, Joe Coltzer, Chelsea Klinger, Bob Norland, Dylan Giesler, Missy Grass, Alan Larson, Rodney Rowland, Gene Burhow, Ronnie Peterson, Irv Tasted, Nancy Anderson, Div Ofstedal, Rory Hamry, Roger Feld, Julie Morales, Percy Miranda, Matt Larson, and Sandra Jensen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our neighborhood, for visitors, the joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and give you peace. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.